in the name of Jesus. Let your name be praised. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. All right, please go ahead. Please speak audibly so that they can hear from you. Yes. Uh, the first question. All right. Jesus said, Okay. Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. Yes. Him said, Jesus said, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. Okay, now let me just rephrase the question so that I won't spend time. Now, Jesus said, Abraham saw my days and rejoiced. So the question now is, where did Abraham, what? Where did he see? Amen. Amen. Where did he what? Where did he see that day? Praise the Lord. Can we find that scripture? Jesus said, Abraham saw my day, and what? And he rejoiced. So where did it see that day? Praise the Lord. Now the reason this question is coming up, can you read from there? John 8, 56, yes? Yes. Now look at this. Jesus said, your father, Abraham, yes? Rejoiced to see my day, yes? And what? He saw it and was glad. Praise the Lord. So Jesus looked at the, the people there and he said, Your father, Abraham, saw my day and he was what? Glad. Now look at this. The Abraham that Jesus was talking about had lived before Jesus came physically. Are you with me? So where did Abraham see that day? That's the question. Now, the simple answer to this question is this. Abraham saw his day on Mount Moriah. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to explain to you. On Mount Moriah, when Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac, are you there? That was, you see, the sacrifice of Isaac on Mount Moriah was a typology of Jesus. Are you there? Look at Abraham, yes, Isaac and what? The ram that was provided. Are you with me? So, Abraham, listen to me. Abraham is God. Are you there? Isaac that is supposed to be killed is humanity, the whole world. Because we are the one that sinned. Are you there? But as Isaac was about to be killed, what happened? God now provided who? The ram which is pointing to who? Jesus. So the Bible says the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. So that thing that happened to Abraham on Mount Moriah was a revelation of Jesus Christ. So Abraham saw that day on Mount Moriah. You read, you you heard the lamb. Abraham saw Jesus. The Isaac that was laid down is representing the sinners, the old world, the people that the ram, Jesus, came to what? Die for. Are you with me? Are you with me? We were the one that sinned, but it was Jesus that died. The ram that was used to replace Isaac knew nothing about the offense. Are you there? Because what God called for was Isaac. The Lord spoke to Abraham and said, give me your who? Your Isaac. Are you with me? Are you with me? God spoke to Abraham and said, give me your what? Don't be distracted. What I'm about to share now is a very sensitive... Huh? Then God spoke to Abraham and said, give me your son whom thou lovest. So the instruction was particularly to who? To who? To Abraham. Are you there? And to his son. Are you with me? Are you there? So if Abraham will obey, what will he do? He will bring Isaac. Are you there? So who is to die? We, because we sinned. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. So legally speaking, we are the one that should die because we sinned. But God in his infinite mercy now brought Jesus to die in our place. The one that knew no sin died in place of those that sinned. So Abraham saw the day of the Lord on where? 
on Mount Moriah. Is it clear to us? Question two, please. Please, those who are just coming, pass the paper around for them so that they can pen down their questions. Today is question and answer. Sunday, please, make sure you ask as many as possible questions and we trust God for an answer. Yes, please, go ahead. There are many things you cannot receive now. Yes. How be it when the spirit of truth shall come? Yes. He will guide you into all truth. Yes. This was said by then. By then it will mean that there are certain truths that Jesus kept to himself. Yes. And didn't reveal even to his disciples. Yes. Did he make any provision to tell us those things or did he go with them to heaven? Praise the Lord. Now look at question two. Question 2 is now saying that Jesus looked at the people and said, There are many things I want to tell you now, but I cannot reveal them to you. I'll be it when the spirit of truth shall come, it will what? It will guide you into what? All truth. Are you with me? So this question is now saying, Does it mean that there are some revelations that Jesus did not share with the people? If yes, did he go with those revelations, or what is his provision to still ensure that he reveals them to us? This is a very sensitive question. Now, the first thing to notice, Jesus did not share those, he did not share all those revelations with the people because they cannot receive it due to the absence of the Spirit of God. But he did not go with it. Are you there? While Jesus was ascending, he left that revelation. And the proof that he left it was you know, can be seen in what the apostles did. So those things you see Paul sharing in the epistles, they were the things that Jesus wanted to share there, that he could not share because they did not have the Holy Spirit. So Jesus gave those mysteries through the apostles. The things that Peter was sharing were the things that Jesus wanted to share that time that he could not share because they did not have the Holy Spirit. So what Jesus could not share with them physically he shared it with the people spiritually through the apostles. Are you with me? Are you with me? Thank you. I hope you, you understand the answer now. Yes, please go ahead. Why did God tell Moses that he cannot see his face when he asked for it? And the same God later said, there is no prophet like Moses whom he spoke face to face. Now look at this. When Moses asked to see the face of God, the Lord told him, you cannot see my face. Are you with me? Later, the same God now came and said, there is no prophet as great as Moses, whom I speak to what? Face to face. So, does it now mean, please go to the B part. I think there's a B part of that question. Yes. Please read the B part. Can we say there is a difference between the face of God and having a face to face encounter with God? Praise the Lord. When, remember, Abraham saw his day on Mount Moriah. Are you with me? Uh-huh. So that means Abraham saw Jesus on that mountain. Because the ram that came to die in place of Isaac was Jesus. The one that came to die on the cross for our sake. That's the ram. So the entire thing that was happening on Mount Moriah to Abraham was a revelation of Jesus. Are you with me? So when Moses said, show me your face, and God said, no, the question is why? What, what Moses was asking for was to see Jesus. The face of God is Jesus. So the face that Moses wanted to see was Jesus. So he, he, knew, he, he knew the prophecy by the Spirit. So he wanted to behold, and God said, no, it's not time. You can't see. <laughs> Are you there? It was that face that God hid from Moses that came in Matthew. So what we are eating from the fathers of old were made visible to we in this generation. So that face that Moses asked for and could not receive came in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And was walking in the midst of the people. That was the face of God. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word, yes. The word was the God. And the word was God. John 1.14. And the word became flesh. The face of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that face there is a person. Not just the look on the person. What Moses was asking to see there was Jesus. 
and God said it's not time. When it is time, he will come bodily. Are you with me? So there's a difference between that face and a face-to-face encounter with God. Are you there? All right, please go ahead. Next question. Number four. Yes. Is there a difference between the Ten Commandments and the 613 laws of Moses? Now, these are sensitive questions now. Is there a difference between the Ten Commandments, yes, and what? And the 613 laws of Moses. There's a difference. Praise the Lord. The Ten Commandments came from God. The 613 laws came from Moses. The Ten Commandments were God's laws to the people. The 613 laws were Moses' law to the people. Are you getting what I'm saying? In the ark, now please, as I'm answering these questions, the Lord may be laying some things in your heart. You can pen down some questions. Are you with me? By the grace of God, we will answer all the questions as the Lord helps us. Now, listen to me carefully. In the ark of covenant, are you with me? In the ark of covenant, there are three things in the ark of covenant. Number one, the rod of Aaron that bordered. One, two, the pot of manna. Are you there? And three, there are two tables of stone. Now, in these two tables of stones, what is written there? The first table contains the first five commandments. The second table contains the second five commandments. Making how many? Ten. The law of Moses was placed outside of the ark. The ten commandments was placed what? Inside the ark. So when Jesus came to abolish the law, the 613 laws of Moses were abolished. But the Ten Commandments remains. That was why Paul was quoting the Ten Commandments in Ephesians. Children, obey your parents. It's part of the Ten Commandments. Are you getting what I'm saying? So let's understand that there's a difference between the two. Are you with me? Thank you. Yes? Right. Yes. What do you have to say about Titan? Because there's a lot of debate on it. Praise the Lord. Titan. Amen. Titan. What is tithe? Tithe is 10%. Are you with me? In the Old Testament, they gave tithes. Abraham, when he, when he was coming from war, he gave the, the tenth of what he has gotten to a man, a priest called Melchizedek. Now, this priest called Melchizedek is a typology of Jesus. He is representing Jesus. Because the Bible could not, you know, in the Bible, you cannot trace the origin of this man. Are you there? Just the same way you cannot trace the origin of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? But this is it. In the Old Testament, they gave tithes, 10%. In the New Testament, now, the question is, what is God now expecting from us? Because the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is what? Now... What God expects from you now is more than 10%. Because God has given you more. So if you want to give to God, now when you hear people say, don't tithe, listen to the complete message. Are you there? They may be saying something very sensitive. See, one thing I want you to notice, you see, media has become a tool in the hands of the devil. There are many preachers that have the truth that you will not listen to because the media has made them look like demons. Are you with me? So if we are New Testament believers, what are you supposed to give? If you should give more than 10. So if somebody comes and says, don't pay tight, ask well, what do you mean? So if you now pay attention to listening to the explanation, you will now know that actually what God wants you to give now is not just the 10%, it's more than 10. So you take 10, you, you take 90, you give God 10. They did that before Jesus came. Now Jesus has come to die. You are still taking 90. You are giving God 10. Tell your neighbor, repent, repent. <laughs> are you getting that concept now? So now we are to give cheerfully. You give what you have, then you give who you have. Paul said, we spend what he has. And what we will spend who they have. Are you getting what I'm saying? So as you give your things to God, you also give yourself to God. As you give your what? Your things to God, you also give your what? Yourself to God. Some people will say, well, 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 I've, I've given money to the church. Why will I go and sweep again? No. 
Sweeping is what? Giving your... Huh? Thank you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Sweeping is giving yourself. Are you getting what I'm saying? Then, yes. How do you give your things? Giving your money. Are you there? Material is what? Is it clear to you? When you go to the church, you are cleaning the pulpit. They are carrying some things. You are arranging, doing those kind of things, using your energy, using your strength. What are you doing? Let's go for evangelism. You are available to do that. What are you doing? You are giving your self. So there's a difference between giving yourself to God and what? Giving your things to God. What? Now listen to this. There is nothing you can give to God that God does not have except one thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Sam, how much can you give God now that God will now say, Hey, I did not have this. Nothing. Are you with me? There's nothing you can give to God that he doesn't have. If we empty CBN, God has more than that. But there's one thing about you that God is looking for is your heart. That's what God does not have. God does not have what? Your heart. You choose to give it to him. So the day you give him your heart, he's happy. Because that is the treasure he wants to get. And one of the proofs to show that you have given him your heart is that you can give yourself to him. There's a song that says, I give myself away so you can what? Use me. Praise the Lord. Next question, please. What exactly is a Christian song? And who can we refer to as gospel? This is a very sensitive question now. What exactly is a Christian song? Praise the Lord. Yes? And who can we refer to as gospel song? Who can we refer to as a gospel singer? Now, let's start with what is a Christian song. Amen. Amen. A Christian song is a song that is Christ-like. A song that reveals Jesus is a Christian song. And when you listen to a Christian song, all you see is who? Christ. Inside every Christian song, you see a person called Christ there. So if what you see in the song is not Christ, it's not a what? A Christian. It's not about what they are saying here. Jesus, what? Jesus, Lord. Jesus, De, Jesus, Joko. Jesus, Di, Mimu, Ofi, Mile, Okawa, Sorry, Mim. Now, that you hear Jesus there does not make it a Christian song. Are you there? So how do I know? You know by revelation. When I hear the song, what am I saying? What revelation do I have? If it is not the revelation of Christ, then that song is not a Christian song. Are you with me? The next one. And who is a? And who can we refer to as a gospel singer? A gospel singer is one whose lyrics is the gospel. Are you there? Most of the songs we sing, if you carefully, may the Lord give us understanding. This thing I want to share and I don't want to share it so that this place will not scatter. But let me just try not to share. Hey Amen. This thing is coming to my... Okay, let me share. Yesterday, I think yesterday night, I stayed long in the church and then when I was going home, there was this song. An old man was sitting at the front of a barbing salon and I think the barber was inside. And then the barber was playing a song. You know, most of this barbing salon is a den of of thieves and robbers. <laughs> uh, boya lo madele, nibi lo makusi. I don't know how the beat is going though. Boya lo madele, nibi lo makusi. When I heard the song, I told the boy close to me, I said, what is this? <laughs> to my surprise, when we got to the barber and we saw an old man sitting at the entrance. The man is shaking his head. Nibi lo makusi, I said, ah. <laughs> if this man die here now, <laughs> The Baba is finished. Now, let's assume that the old man has accepted to die. But according to the lyrics of the song, he's saying, Nipi, Loma Shekini. I could have seen, hey, may the Lord give us understanding. How will the man die at the front of that shop and the Baba will be innocent? So it will mean that we, the devil have so much blind our eyes that we no longer care about the lyrics. Our concern is the beat. That's why we will be lost. The moment your concern is now beat and not lyrics, you are finished. It will mean that in the day when they will say, what you will not do, what you will not do, you will sing it. Because you are lost. As a matter of fact, there is even a song like that. 
What you know that was the everything. What you know that was even had answered. Many of us are guilty. If we check your phone, I will see all these songs there. I tell you the truth in the Holy Ghost. We do not have many gospel singers in Nigeria. We have just few. Are you getting what I'm saying? We have what? Just few. I don't know the latest dance now. The worldly people we invent a dance. And then on Sunday, the next Sunday, you see it in church. I don't even know how to pronounce the latest dance now. I just know it's GW. You don't know how to even pronounce it. And we saw the video of a mighty so-called gospel singer. She was dancing those things with her crew on the altar. A gospel singer. Maybe you think they are gospel singers because of their big hearts. That's not it. Before I accept you as a gospel singer, two things are involved. One, we'll check your lyrics. Two, we check your life. Are you there? If the two is not pointing to Jesus, you are not a gospel singer. Are you there? And if you want to grow, you must watch the songs that you listen to. That's that's why somebody said one time ago, one 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 me, one 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 me, I'm on the altar with my father. Everybody was dancing and sweating. They now sold us the origin of the one 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 me that has now become praise song now on the altar. When we saw the origin, we, we now fainted. Because all we were seeing in the real song were ladies with ordinary pants twisting behind the car. They just think the they just think the last part of the thing. That one said, one 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 me, I'm in maybe Miami. The one we call gospel leader now came to us and said, I'm on the altar with my father. It's still the same inspiration, sir. If we truly know God, let's connect. Song will come. Are you there? You can ask the, the you can ask the choristers. Most of the times, the song they present, we get it. They get it right in the fellowship. That's why before three they are here, connect to God and get a song fresh. That's gospel singers. Not uh, <laughs> may, may God have mercy on us. <laughs> Please go ahead. Yes. What exactly is the gospel? What exactly is the gospel? Praise the Lord. Not everybody preaching is preaching the gospel. Are you there? That's the truth. You can measure it. See, when you are preaching the gospel, there's nobody on earth that does not need the gospel. Nobody. Are you there? Whether you are rich, whether you are poor, whether you are sick, everyone needs what? The gospel. Do you know why? Because the gospel has environment, it's like a triangle. The birth of Christ, the death of Christ, and the resurrection of Christ. That's the gospel. As we begin to preach and we are touching those corridors, we are preaching the gospel. But when we now divert and we are now doing, okay, I will give you 42 keys. I will show you 15 potters you can touch and sir, that's not the gospel. Okay, if I come up now and I say, I want to teach you 15 ways to make money. What of the one that is already a billionaire? That means everything I will be saying now for maybe one hour is a waste to that man. And he came for the meeting yet he was not blessed. Why? Because I did not preach the gospel. There's no how you preach the gospel and everybody will not be blessed. No how. Because everybody needs it. Whether you are rich or it doesn't even matter your category, you need the gospel. Even if I come and I say, well, 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 this, how not to be sick? How not to be sick is not even the gospel. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because there are people seated there who are not sick. So that means everything you are saying is now irrelevant to them. When it is the gospel, then it has to be for everybody. The gospel is not one-sided. It's at the center. At the center. Everyone needs it, irrespective of their current situation. Please, next question. Is it just saying something for the Bible, from the Bible? How to, how do I know I am preaching the gospel? Praise the Lord. God's preaching is not just about saying something from the Bible. Well, John 2, 3, John chapter, that's not preaching. That's not the gospel. I have told you, what is the triangle of the gospel? Let's go together. 
the birth of Christ, yes. The death of Christ, yes. The resurrection of Christ. That's the triangle of the gospel. If you read the Old Testament and you don't see Jesus there, you have wasted your time. How to measure the profit you have made from the world is in your ability to see who? To see Jesus. If Jesus is not seen, then all the effort is wasted. Are we together? Yes, next question. What, what is the thin line between dressing well as a Christian and dressing in a worldly manner? Praise the Lord. What's the thin line between dressing well as a Christian and dressing in a what? In a worldly manner. Yes. There are some sisters now who are dressing, most sisters and brothers, anyways, who are dressing in a strange way, all because they feel they want to dress well. If your dressing now exposes your nakedness, that is no longer what? Decent. So you cannot call such a dressing a Christian dress. Because Christ is not revealed in that dressing. Before you dress and you come out, you need to ask people, what thought comes to their mind when they see me? Are you there? Are you with me? There are... Thank you. There are sisters that when you see them, because of the way they have dressed you naturally begin to lust after them. Are you getting what I'm saying? You feel like you, just, you are just thinking of dirty things. All you are saying is just immoral things. Why? Because of the addressing. But there are some sisters when you see them, even when you, are, you have been misbehaving before they came, once they enter, you just behave. Because there is something about them that will speak to your sense. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's the kind of person you should be. So, there's a difference between dressing well and being immodest. Cover your nakedness. Be decent, be neat. That's how to dress well. But when you begin to expose what should not be exposed, you are no longer dressed well. There's a, there's a demonic top now that is called... <laughs> that, oh my God. I mean... <laughs> there's a demonic top that is called crop top. That top is somehow expensive, but a, the devil have signed on that top. <laughs> they can't put it on, you won't see the abdomen, it's not possible. That abdomen will now sew. <laughs> That's how they are preaching the gospel. That's not a decent dress. Are you there? Yes, next question. What is heaven? Is it something you go to? Is it some? Or somewhere, somewhere, somewhere you go to, or somewhere you live in now. Praise the Lord. It's heaven where you go to, or where you are in now. Is is the two. The moment you come into Christ, you have come into heaven. So heaven is first where you are, before where you are going. Are you there? So if you are not in heaven, you are not going to heaven. It is where you are that you go to. Are you there? So what is heaven? Heaven is that environment where the will of God is done perfectly. A man that is in heaven, when he sins, he knows what he has done is wrong. So he can, he can ask for forgiveness. It's a sign he's in heaven. How many of you have discovered that when people lie beside you, it doesn't mean much to you? It's, it's a sign that you are not in heaven. <laughs> Do you see it doesn't mean much to you? Because you have come to the point where you see it as a normal thing. You can be walking on the street now and you see one boy putting his hand on one girl's head and they are just doing something on the way. In your mind, you say, well, well, we thank God. That's what is happening. Well, 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 well. You are not in heaven. If you have come into heaven, when you see those things, it will create a body in your heart. Other people see it as normal, but you will, you will, you will feel sad. You will get home. They give you food. You say, wait first, wait first, wait first. You first go and kneel in a place. That's a sign. This thing I'm saying now is strange to some of you because you are not in heaven. But you have been praying to go there, sir. You must first be in heaven before you go to heaven. Where you are is where you are going to. So there are some people now currently they are already in hell. There's no evil that is not part of them. 
As a matter of fact, when you lie beside them, say, hey, it's just a normal thing. How can you live without lying? When sin becomes normal, your destination huh, is no longer heaven. The moment you get to that point where sin becomes normal to you, your destination is no longer heaven. Are you there? Mm. Yes, next question, please. Many people say that we will know the fake from the original on the last day. Yes. Sir, I feel we have we have wait until the last before we identify this, then believe that. <laughs> now let me call you. Now there are people that say that um, it is on the last day that we will know the fake from the original. Are you there? So the question now is, must we wait till the last day before we identify the fake from the original? The, the answer is what? No. Because if you must wait till the last day, what if you now follow the wrong person? What if you have been listening to the messages of the wrong preacher? Because you don't even know. You must, you must develop the spiritual mechanism to discern between real and fake now. Otherwise, your future is at stake. Let me give you an example. The rich man and Lazarus. The rich man thought he's the one on top. And Lazarus is the one below. When they died, everything became clear to him. Lazarus was carried to Abraham's bosom. The rich man was what? In Hades. In torment. Are you with me? Listen to me. You don't need to wait till Jesus comes before you identify those who are fake. Are you there? You can identify them what? Now. That is why we need the gift of discerning of spirit. What do I call it? Your safety is in your ability to discern. Your safety is in what? It's in your ability to discern. And you must understand that if you cannot discern, you become a victim of deception. Because a man that cannot discern will be deceived easily. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now I push this question to you. When was the last time you heard God? If you cannot remember the last time you heard God, it's a sign that you are lost. You see, the way spiritual things are designed is this. You can be lost and yet you are found on earth. You haven't processed your admission. They even gave you. Now you are studying in school. But you are lost. <laughs> in the record of that your institution, your name is there. And your family can identify you, but God is, is looking for you. <laughs> so we are Salewa. No, why Salewa is on it? Fancy. He doesn't even use belt. He's in no belt gun. <laughs> May the devil not deceive you. The thing is falling, but they are enjoying it. Yes, we thank God. We are the big boys here. Yeah. Sa- Who you look at defines who you look what like. When you see people misbehaving, don't blame them. They are, they are seeing something. There's something they are beholding that is not Christ. If you want to change your life today, it's simple. Begin to look at Jesus. Suddenly you discover that there's something about you that is now changing to the one you are looking at. Are you with me? Yes, please. What is the difference between a magic and a miracle? What's the difference between a magic and a miracle? Now look at this. Both magic and miracle, both of them are wonderful. A magic is a wonderful thing. A miracle is a wonderful thing too. But the difference between the two is the source. Turning stones to bread is a magic. Multiplying bread is a miracle. What is a wonderful thing? Anything that makes you wonder is a wonderful thing. <laughs> Are you there? Anything that you know that is that can make you that can wow you. Are you there? That can make wow, wow. Are you with me? That's a wonder. So, and when you invite a magician and he performs some magics, what do you do? Wow. When you see the dead coming back to life, you see the same. Wow. <laughs> Both of them are wonderful, but the source is not the same. So a magic is a wonderful thing that is coming from the devil. A miracle is a wonderful thing that is coming from God. 
Hey, okay, does it not mean those prophets that are using demonic powers now? What are they now doing? It's magic. <laughs> so they are using their magic to heal the sick. And you are there clapping, saying, Papa, Papa, ride on, sir. Hey, we ride on now. Soon you too will become a, a magician. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now let me quickly, is that all? One more. Now look at this. Turning stones to bread is what? Magic. Do you know why? It is what you bring to God that God will multiply for you. You can't bring stones and expect to get bread. If you come to him with bread, you get more bread. If you come to him with stones, you get what? More stones. Are you with me? Don't worry. That's a teaching for another time. Yes, the last question there. Can there be a legal reason someone will leave his or spouse after marriage? Especially when they already have children. Please don't forget, today is question and answer Sunday. We are going to take all your questions. Just pen them down. This is the last question here. Now look at this. Can there be a legal reason why somebody will leave his spouse in marriage, especially after children? You see, look at this. When it comes to relationship, you have to be very sensitive. Don't rush into relationship. You see this, oh boy, I see one girl, oh, ah, kai, the girl might die. You will die. <laughs> you follow the girl that might die. You will die. That's the girl that will kill. <laughs> the girl might die. You will die. You will just kill yourself. <laughs> the reason is because that thing you have seen is death. That's what will kill you. <laughs> you have even said it yourself. The girl find what? Die. You see, that last thing you said is what we have told to you. Relationship is more than what we think. Are you with me? It's more than what we think. I see people who, who will get married and after three children, then they will look at their wife and say, well, the Lord is telling me that uh, I'm not supposed to marry you. So they will leave their wife and go and stay alone. That thing is what? It's not God. Are you with me? Are you there? Ah, can I say this? Huh? Can I say it? Listen to me. There are many people that are in church that will not see Jesus on the last day. There are many people in church that when God comes, when Jesus comes, they won't go with him. Because they have a load on them that will make them too heavy for rapture. Rapture is for those that are light. Are you there? But some loads that you carry makes you heavy. So even if Jesus comes, you cannot go with him. Imagine a man that left his wife with three children. He left them and went ahead to marry another woman. The wife, the wife is still alive, but he left the woman with the three children. For one, one unreasonable reason. Are you getting what I'm saying? Look at this. It is better to stay single and not marry to your dad. Than to get married and abandon your partner after marriage. That offense can be grievous. Because you don't know what you are doing. You see... When you get married, there are many things that is tied to the marriage. The destiny of those children is tied to that union. Because the father left, those girls can become prostitutes. I was just speaking with a brother today and he told me how that their last born got pregnant for two men. I said, um, can you come again with this, please? <laughs> Bring me to understand this. Uh, sir, what I'm trying to say is that um, the first man impregnated her. She gave birth, okay? I'm not that man, too. Now impregnated her, she now gave birth. Too. Your last one? He said, yes, sir. I said, okay, okay. <laughs> Where's the last one now? 
She has gained admission. She's in university. I said, okay, we bless the name of the Lord. <laughs> Look at this. Do you think that God will hold that man not guilty? The second man, do you think God will look at him as somebody that is not guilty? That lady herself, we go see her as somebody that is not guilty. Don't bring your neck into bandage. There are some things that you can avoid. You see, all this, yeah, this girl is just fine. You see, face your life first. Don't see any other person when Jesus is not real to you. You will die before your time. Are you there? The first thing you chase now is how Jesus will be real to you. Marriage is more than what you are thinking. Let me quickly share this mystery with you. You see, more than 90% of the youth, the reason they want to get married their reason is usually carnal. Most of them, they have never had sex before. They want to know how it feels. Let me just marry. Ah, Lord. Even I remember those days when we were young. They come and ask us. Do you want Jesus to come now? We were Christians. So. <laughs> they are neighbors. We were Christians. <laughs> no, I will tell them. Ah, oh, Jesus should not come now. Let me just get married at least. Maybe two weeks after my marriage, let him come. It will mean that there's something you are picturing. <laughs> when you now marry, you will now know that, okay. <laughs> you will now know that after two, there's another figure called three. And it doesn't end there. There is four, five, six, seven, on and on. That's when you will know that, that that thing that brought you into it cannot keep you going. Are you there? When you come into marriage with the wrong reason, you have entered into hell by yourself. Don't let anybody put you under pressure. I know you may have friends who are already in one ungodly relationship or the other. Don't let them move you. Face Jesus. Let Jesus be real to you first. Before you talk about what? Relationship. Look at me. One of the signs to show that you are ready for relationship is that you are now mature spiritually. You have gotten to that point where you can stick to one. There are many things involved. Are you there? You are mature spiritually. Your mindset is now matured. There are some people that are not mature spiritually. They can't stick to one. So they like taller today. And they see Bookie tomorrow. Ah, Bookie, no. I'm not there, Wakbelu, Bookie. I'm not Wakbelu, Bookie, no. And then they are already thinking about Bookie. It's a sign that they are not ready. Do you know what it means to marry? You will see a lot of women, but you have to stick to that one. Do you know what it means to stick to one? For those of you that at home, you still have your daddy and your mommy, you better be greeting them well. <laughs> they have labored. It's not easy to stick to one. Every day when your daddy goes out, he sees women. Tell your neighbor, say, he sees women. And most of these women, they even dress more than mommy. But the reason he comes home every night is by the mercies of the Lord. (laughs) He has decided to stick to what? One. Before you get married, your strength is in your muscle. As a single, your strength is where? So you can deliberately put up your singlet so that you can see your six parts. But when you marry, your strength is in your ability to stick to one. I have seen a lot of sisters, but I choose this one. That's strength. I've seen a lot of men. I have some men with their dirty beards or whatever it is, but I stick to this one. This one. This bad man, I stick to this. <laughs> Amen. Yes, any other question there? Yes, let's. Please go ahead with this one. What are the factors that can help us to discern God's leading? What are the factors that can help us to discern the leadings of the Lord? Praise the Lord. The first thing to consider is the word of the Lord. Are you there? 
when you are familiar with the scriptures, it becomes easy for you to discern what? The leadings of the law. Are you there? So a man that is not familiar with the scriptures cannot discern what? The leadings of the law. Why? Everything, oh my God, look at this. God will never say what he has not said. God will never what? You know what that means? God will not say what he has not said. What he has said is what has been written in the scriptures. So there is what God has said. There is what God is saying. And there is what God will say. Are you there? Now look at this. If I know what God has said, then I can know what God is saying. Are you there? And if I can know what God is saying, from there I can discern what, what God will say. Are we together? So the, the main point now is, when you are familiar with the scriptures, it becomes easy to discern the leadings of them. Personally speaking, I don't, if I want to get what God is saying concerning a matter, it doesn't take me two minutes. I'm not joking. Light is just there. Lord, what are you saying? You don't, I don't need to say where. Once I say, what are you saying? And I'm quiet, just thinking about it. Psh, it comes. Less than two minutes. Psh, three minutes. Psh, light. Light. Why? You are familiar with the word of God. Oh, my daughter, you know I'm a pastor and I'm a man of God. Meet me in a place in the night. Make sure nobody comes there. I want to show you the word of the Lord. Check the scripture. Is it there? No, okay. Where did Jesus ask any female to meet him in the night? It's not in the scripture, but you know, there are some things the Lord is saying now in this new generation that is, sir, sir, calm down. <laughs> the things that we obey are the things where? In the scriptures. So the scriptures are there as a guide. They are there as a what? As a guide. Anything that does not have root in the scriptures, throw it away. Are you with me? Take note of that. A man of God was preparing for administration and a voice spoke to him. When you get there, when you get to that place, begin to put your head on the head of the people. I want to impact them. The man of God was now surprised. He was praying, Lord. He went to the Bible to check. There's no place where the apostles put their head on the head of anybody. He was praying. He was praying. The program has started. They were saying, ah, man of God, sir, I'm He said, mumbo, mumbo, uluwa, shall I hear me? King Boris, sorry, I'm going to go away. I'm going to go away. I'm going to go away. He prayed until God spoke to him. God said, I did not say it to him. So that means the first voice he heard is from who? The devil. But if he does not have scriptural backings, he will not going to say, Praise the Lord. Um, you come, you come. I want to just transfer some things to you. And we're going to do. <laughs> I said, get it go, get it go. Hey, get it go. <laughs> My people perish for the lack of knowledge. Some people were told to eat grass, only gra- as you eat it, everything in your body will work well, and they were eating grasses. They did not even cut it and bring it to the church. They went there, moving like animals, men and brethren. Many drank petrol because their man of God said it. Even if I say it to you, if it's not in the scripture, throw it away. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's a sign that you are grown. I, I saw a video. It was a prophetic service. Do you know what everybody were holding? They were holding a bottle of Buddha. Raise it now, everybody raise it like this. <laughs> no, it's, no, I think it's that. It's, it's a green bottle. It's good at green bottle. I'm not used to those, those um, deadly things. Eh? Stab. It's, it's because it's a green bottle. They hold it. They raise it like nah. Begin to pray. Begin to pray now. A bottle of star. You know why they want their star to shine? <laughs> Ignorance will cost you. There's some people that won't come to Bible say, Oh, we just go to YMF now. Just the preacher, preacher, everybody will be jotting. That's what they are doing there. Yeah, I will better sleep at home. I will trek here and I still end up jotting again. Don't build knowledge now. Soon they will ask you to bring cutlass. <laughs> so if you can't build knowledge, 
Have you not seen people coming to service with cutlass before? Your enemy must die. <laughs> Say your enemy must die. And my enemy must die. Tell him for all I'm more adawa. Ekwa da da da. I want that only lay you up, father. Oh yeah, no, no, it's okay. Oh, it do not look like riots. They want to go and invade the territory. Meanwhile, they are in the church. In the church, yet everything looks like a riot. My people perish. God said, my people, meaning they are in the church, but they still lack wisdom. We did it while we were young. Too. There's nothing we did not bring to church by instruction. We were not care, we were not careful of what the scripture says. We were only concerned about what our pastor says. Whatever they say we should do. Coconut service. Have you not seen it before? Coconut service. But one more going and why 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 exchange your palette? Don't I like the love for more girl? What's again more for real? Tell me. Meanwhile, the altar is somewhere eating rice and chicken. You are there displaying your foolishness. My people perish for the lack of what knowledge. Yes, thank you. Please, next question. How does Christ demand his supreme love from us? Number two question is not clear. Please, you can just start it so that the person will rewrite. Yes, go to the next one. What are the objects that are difficult to forsake because of Christ? Or let's just see what are the things that are difficult to forsake? What are the things that are difficult to forsake? There's nothing that should be difficult to forsake because of Christ. Are you there? If you, have, if you truly want to follow God, you must be ready to what? To leave all. Are you there? Nothing must be too big for you to leave. You want to follow Jesus. Are you with me? That's it. Nothing should be difficult to live. Yes, next question. What are we supposed to do when God gives us victory? When are we supposed to do? What are we what are we supposed to do when God gives us victory? What should you do? Huh? When God gives you victory, what, what are you supposed to do? Huh? What are you supposed to do? Huh? Give him. Give him. Give him. So give him quality praise. So you come to church. Hey, 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 hey. As you are doing this, they will not come again. <laughs> there are people that have shared testimonies that went on their way back home. That thing they just shared now came. Are you with me? Anytime God gives you victory, the first thing to do is to stand. The scripture says, having done all to what? To stand. The word stand there means watch. Because the people you have just defeated will come for you. I'm not saying we should not celebrate God, but the first thing is to what? To stand. In the book of John chapter 9, the Bible told us about a woman. He gave, she gave birth to a child and the child was blind from her womb. The question is, at what point did the blindness came to the child? When the mother slept, the devil came and stole the eyes of the baby. Maybe she's that kind of woman that the moment she got pregnant, hey, finally, 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 finally. And instead of her to stand, she was what? She was sleeping. And the devil came and took the eyes of the baby. So when you get victory, the first thing is what? To stand. Watch. So in your watching position, you cannot give thanks to God. Are you with me? And I've told you what thanksgiving is. What is thanksgiving? Giving back to God what he gave to you. That's thanksgiving. If God gives you 50,000 now, the real thanksgiving is not ever me, go back and find me, you now put 1,000 in the envelope. So everybody, everybody will now join you in the church. They don't know you are a, you are a wicked. They don't know you are a wicked person. No? They will now join you. I think you are doing God a favor. That's not thanksgiving. That's just, those things we do in church is good. But what thanksgiving really is, is you giving to God what he gave to you. What does that mean? If God gives you 50,000 and God says, Look at that, your friend, that needs 10,000. Go and give him. If you obey that instruction, you are already doing what? You are giving thanks. That's how to give thanks. Not thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No. 
It's more than, it's part of it, but it's what more than that. Are you with me? Thank you. Next question, please. How can I, as a teenager, get access to God? How can I, as a teenager, get access to God? Now, let's remove teenager there. There's no age restriction. Are you there? You see, if you want to know God, you cannot know God directly. Are you there? If you want to know God, are you with me? If you want to know God, you must first know Jesus. If you don't find Jesus, you cannot know God. You see, most of these religions that call God, it's not God they are worshiping. Do you know why? Because they have not known who? Jesus. The Bible says no man can come to the Father except through who? The Son. That means if you refuse not to know Jesus, there's no way you can know who? Huh? The Father, which is God. Are you with me now? So as a teenager, if you want to know God, what should you do? Find Jesus. It is your knowledge of Jesus that will translate to your knowledge of God. So don't say, I know God, when you don't know Jesus. Have you not discovered that most of the religions, they, they try to separate Jesus from the equation. So they try to make you feel like you can, know, you can get to God without Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a lie. It's a lie. I hope you know even the devil is a God on, on his own. So let's be careful of what we call. When you say God, please know who you are calling. Yes, because there are gods. Yes, next question. What are the likely consequences of being unequally yoked with unbelievers? If you are unequally yoked with unbelievers, what are the consequences? You suffer what they suffer. Are you there? You suffer what? What they suffer. To be unequally yoked with them means that you are doing what they are doing. They are lying, you are lying. You are a Christian, no? But you are doing the exact thing they are doing. There are some of us now, we have friends who are ungodly, but we, we don't know how to preach to them. When we see them, we say, Ah, Baba, now you, ah, Baba, Baba, now you just, you just did, you just did, you just did. You are not preaching to them, you are healing them. That thing you are doing has a consequence. Are you getting what I'm saying? So if you, if you choose to be unequally yoked with unbelievers, the problem you will face is that you will suffer the same thing they want. They suffer. And in the day of destruction, when they will be destroyed, you will also join them. Because you are not productive to God. Are you there? Next question. According to Philippians 2, verse 9 through 11. Yes. How has God exalted Jesus Christ? That's 1A. That's on <laughs> 1A. Then B. Please go to B. How will every person exalt me? Praise the Lord. How has God exalted Jesus? God exalted Jesus by giving him a name. Are you there? If God will exalt you now, what he will do is to what? Is to give you a name. And when the Bible says God gave Jesus a name, you will think what God did is, God now says, Jesus, oh, you have done well. Yeah, take. Jesus now says, oh, what is this, daddy? It's a, it's a name, it's a name. Take it, be taking it. <laughs> no. The word God gave Jesus a name means that God breathed on that name, Jesus. Because Jesus was already carrying the name before this time. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that, that, that statement, God giving him a name, means that God breathed on it. And the moment God breathed on that name, it became a name that you can now use to access God. Because when Jesus was on earth, nobody prayed in his name. Are you there? Are you with me? Even when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray, he did not say, then you now say, in Jesus' name. They will have run away. I said, in Jesus' name. What the... Nobody prayed in his name. But when he left, we now started praying in his name. Why? Because God breathed on him. So that giving him a name there means God what? Breathed on him. He, he placed his breath on it. Are you with me? There's another place in the Bible where the Bible says, and God gave power to the disciples. Have you seen it in your scriptures? So when you see words like that, you begin to wonder, God gave power. Did he give them as a solid thing? When the Bible says God gave power to his disciples, what it means is he gave permission. You see, the power of God is in his permission. Are you there? 
If God asks you to go and preach eh, to a particular person, because you have his permission, you have power. Are you there? We command the power of God by securing his permission. Anytime we do things as permitted by him, power comes in that direction. So you cannot command power when what you are doing is not ordained by the Lord for you. Are you there? So it is God's permission that is translated to power. So when the Bible says he gave them power, it means he gave them a go-ahead. So if what you are doing, God gave you a go-ahead to do it, it means you what? You have power in that thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, next question. How will every person exalt him? How will every Praise the Lord. John said it. This question is saying, how do we exalt Jesus? John said it. He said, I must decrease for him to what? To increase. So, how to exalt Jesus now is to what? Is to deliberately decide to what? To decrease so that Jesus can what? Increase. Now, what does it mean to decrease? To decrease here is not saying to ridicule yourself, to look down on yourself. That's not it. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? To decrease is to live your life in such a way that God will be glorified. To live your life in, in such a way that Jesus will be glorified. Paul had a testimony. He said, and they glorified God in us. That's the testimony of a man that has decreased for Jesus to what? To increase. Are we together? Yes, next question. How does the spirit of man link with the spirit of God? How does the spirit of man link with the spirit of God? Praise the Lord. Now look at this. Before Jesus comes into you, you have a spirit. Are you there? Because man is spirit, soul, and body. Are we together? Before the spirit of God comes into you, you have a spirit. Now, you see, the, you see one thing is this. Your spirit can mingle. Your spirit can what? Can mingle. When I say mingle, that means it can interact. Are you getting what I'm saying? If a demonic spirit possesses now look at this. Every human being have a spirit, but that spirit is in a you know is in a resting state. It's not active. The spirit that possesses the man is the spirit that will activate the spirit of that man. Are you there? So if a demon possesses a person now, it means that a demonic spirit has now what? Activated the spirit of that person. And the Bible says, he that is done together to the Lord is now one spirit with the Lord. So, the moment a demonic spirit activates the spirit of a person, the spirit of that person now becomes one with that demonic spirit. That's why that spirit cannot begin to do things through the person. During the last camp, we were doing counseling, and then it, somebody came to me and said, Sir, something used to tell me to steal, and then I used to say no, but sometimes I used to take some things, but it will be telling me to steal. That's a demonic spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying now? So the same thing happens when Jesus enters. When Jesus enters, the spirit of the Lord now becomes one with your spirit. And because of that oneness, God can now begin to do things through your life. Is it clear to you now? That's it. Yes. Bible makes us understand that the devil Let's be has been fast. cast out of heaven since the, so this person is trying to say that the devil has been casted out of heaven according to the Bible. Yes, the devil has been so casted out. The book out. of Revelation says that there was war in heaven and yes. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. So he was now trying to say um, after the devil has been casted out that or the event was, has taken place already that did the event take place how did it take place? The devil has been casted out in the beginning. But yes. well, now the Bible is saying that there was war in heaven. The devil is found in heaven again, fighting again. Praise the Lord. All right, please. What you do for me is read the question before I come to you to make it faster. Now, the devil has been cast down. He has been, you know, he has been sent down from heaven from the beginning. Revelation is just trying to explain that which happened where? In the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2. And the earth was without form. Why was the earth without form? Because the devil landed on earth. It was when the devil landed on earth that the earth became void and empty. 
it was because the devil landed on earth. That was why there was darkness upon the face of the earth. God needed to say, let there be light. So the, the landing of the devil on earth disconfigured the earth. It denatured the earth. God had to come to our rescue. Are you getting what I'm saying? So even the devil came down before you appeared. That's why the devil is older than you. He came before you came. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that's why the Bible says you should resist the devil and reward. The Bible also t- told us to beware of the wiles of the devil. He has wiles because he knows more. He has experience in this head realm than you do. That's why he can tempt you with things that can bring you down. Are you getting what I'm saying? Next question, please. Okay, so this person is saying, when Jesus said, I hear Satan fall like, fall like lightning, yes. So she's saying that, the, was he referring to the fall of um, Satan from devil? Is that because of the, was it because of his, the fall of the 72, I think 72 that Yes, of, yes. Or Satan has, was it referring to the fall that Satan had then? No. When Jesus sent some people out and they came and said, We beheld, it was even Jesus that said it. Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall like that. What Jesus was referring to there is not the original fall from heaven. No. That statement shows that what Jesus was trying to communicate there is that that they are going out was fruitful. Are you there? Because what that means is that they have conquered that place for the Lord. Are you there? You can one of the signs to show that you have conquered a territory is that the devil must what must fall like like they have defeated the principality of that territory. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it's not referring to the first fall. Yes. Is it compulsory compulsory to pay your tithe to the local assembly if you are tending or to any manner? Praise the Lord. This question says, is it compulsory you pay your tithe to the local assembly you are attending or to any man of God? The word any man of God is dangerous. Are you there? Is what? It's dangerous. Let's bracket any. It doesn't have to be any. Are you getting what I'm saying? What is giving generally? Giving is appreciation. Giving is a response. So if I come to an assembly and I give offerings, what I'm doing is I'm responding to that which the Lord has given to me through that assembly. Are you getting what I'm saying? Huh? So, if you are being blessed, if you are being built in a place, are you there? It's good for you to give to that place. As a response to the blessings that you are receiving there. Giving has to be a response. Are you there? But it's possible that you have a disciple who is not are you with me? Who is who has a different ministry from the ministry you attend? Are you there? Are you with me? Now, in that case, now wisdom is profitable for what? For direction. Because you attend that place, you need to also be committed to giving to that place. So there's a way you do it. You can now choose to divide it. Maybe half of whatever you want to give, half to that place, and half to the one that is building you up in the faith. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's it. But the source that is building you must be given to. That's how to continue to be built. Are you there? Otherwise, it will dry up for you. Not because the man is dry. But because you are not renewing the source, the source will dry. Are you there? The man is not dry, but you have violated the rule of giving, so it will dry. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's it. Yes? The book of Revelation lays so much emphasis on the children of Israel. So does that mean the children of Israel will be most affected in the end time? No. Praise the Lord. You see, you must have heard people say things like, Israel is God's choice. Are you getting what I'm saying? In the Old Testament, there was something God wanted to teach. Are you with me? So he was using the Israelites. Are you there? But now that Jesus has come, are you there? Now that Jesus has come, the equation has changed. Are you there? 
everyone that has received Jesus have become the Israelites of God. We are now the Israel of God. Are you there? Not the physical place. You know, one of the one of the issues we have now is most religion, most you know, Christian religions, they are now looking at the physical place. As a matter of fact, Christians travel to Israel as pilgrimage. It's no longer place now. The emphasis of God has left place. Is now on person. I don't need to try to be like the Israelites in that place or try to travel there. No. If I am in Christ, I'm now an Israel, an Israelite of God. Are you there? No longer a place. The emphasis is now what? Person. Yes. Please. Are we done with this too? Yes. Okay, I think uh, Minister Beloved, please come up, assisting. Let's keep rotating. Please be fast because of time. Yes, you can ask me one. Let me. So I noticed that in the Bible, especially the book of Psalm, for instance, Psalm 7, verse 3 and 6, it was ended with Selah. So what is the meaning? Praise the Lord. Somebody said, Why is it that the most of the things in the book of Psalm hence with Selah? Are you there? Now, the word Selah, they are passing a message to you. When you see Selah, it means pause and meditate. Sela means pause. That's the meaning of Sela. It's not saying, hey, man. Are you there? Mm-mm. Pause and what? And meditate. Yes, next question. Please go by the question before I ask you to make it so, fast. About putting on trousers. Yes. Eating of meals, eyelashes, and others. What are we to say about this? Praise the Lord. You are fixing nails, right? Fixing of nails, eyelashes. When you fix eyelashes, you see, everything we do is a message. It's a what? It's a message. If you are real, you are passing a message. If you choose to be fake, you are still passing a message. Now, if I fix eyelashes, just assume I'm a female now. And I fix eyelashes, what am I telling God? I'm saying, God, it's not like I don't have eyelashes. But these ones that I have is too small. Let me assist God. (laughs) In elongating my lashes. <laughs> Do you know some people? They, they went blind because of that thing. You know, they went forever. Their eyes went, went blind. Why? They wanted to help God. Tell your, number, tell your friend. Your eyelashes. It's okay. Stop looking like a masquerade. Everything will now be swollen. And now, now they are like this. Once they do like this, the thing comes and says, Jesus, blood on Let's be real to ourselves. Are you there? Your nail is fine. Don't. Are you there? This thing I'm saying now is hard for some of you because you like it. You used to admire it. Especially those different colors. I say, I like this one. Like this one. This one. <laughs> Are you there? Don't add to what God has given to you. You are beautiful as you are. If I ask you, now everybody wants to marry the will of God. But the will of God for your life is not fake, it's original. You can never find God's will in your fake states. Uh uh-uh. uh. It has to be real. If your will of God comes to you, and your eyes is like this, your nail is like this. It won't find you. You are around, yet you are invisible. Wisdom is profitable for what? For direction. Praise the Lord. And concerning trousers for females, right? Personally, I'm going to advise that females, you don't put on trousers. It's not a sin. Don't get me wrong. It's not what? Well, <laughs> Let's get, don't get me wrong. It's not what? Is not a sin, but uh, is, this is my own counsel as a minister of God. Some of the married women, when they put on trousers, some of these things that look like tights, that's what they put on. And they come to their shop going like this, going like this. You are looking at a, a, a young boy is looking at a married woman and then he's saying, Father, Father, Father. Must you bring others into temptation? Are you there? 
And if you ask them now, they will say, well, I'm dressing for my husband. Sir, it's more than your husband. People on the street will look at you. They are not your husband. Don't bring them into temptation. There is something about trousers that if you, are, if you are wearing it, you can easily go to the street. You won't know where you wear one that is the Lord will have mercy on us. Please go to the first question. As believers, if we get distracted like being in a place of prayer and our mind is wandering around, yes. what are we to do about it? Praise the Lord. If you are in a place of prayer and your mind is wandering around, what are you to do? It's a sign that you are distracted. So what you need to do is, number one, it can be because your eyes, your eyes are opened. Are you there? Why do we close our eyes when we pray? We are not closing our eyes so that God will answer. No. Whether you open or you close, God will still answer. Are you there? The reason we close our eyes is to avoid distractions majorly. Are you with me? So it can be because that person is not closing his or her eyes. So the first thing is close your eyes when you are praying. Are you there? And when you discover your mind is still wandering, continue the prayer. As you persist in it, you will overcome that what? That wandering. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's how to go about it. Yes? According to the doctrine of the church. According to the doctrine of the church. A church. Of a church, yes. They believe that pigs are unclean animals. Yes. So they believe it is an abomination to pigs. Yes. Yes. All in the name of Jesus casting unclean spirit into you. Yes. Not pigs only, though. Animals like snakes. Yes. Is, what are we to say about it? Praise the Lord. Some doctrines believe that eating pigs is a sin. Are you there? Or it is not good to eat pigs. Praise the Lord. Now listen to me. Jesus did not cast unclean spirit into the pigs. The spirit took permission. And said, please don't send us away. We want to be in this territory. And Jesus said, it's fine. They left and entered into those pigs. What? Themselves. That does not make pig an unclean animal for eating. Are you there? But in your work with God, God can deliberately point your attention to some things not to eat. That one is personal to you. But don't come and bring something that is personal to you, public, and make it... Are you there? No. So all animals are clean. Are you with me? But based on your work with the Lord, God can ask you not to eat certain animals. That is personal to who? To you. Take for instance, demon possess a man and they refer to the man as legion. Are you there? Does it now mean all the females should stay single? Who you will marry? Is he not a man? How do you say, well, men are unclean now. Men are unclean now. <laughs> but you will just die in ignorance. Most of the people that wrote the Bible are men. I won't read the Bible now. It's written by men. Men. Uh, uh, legion. Legion. That man is a man. Okay. <laughs> Please continue. This same church. Yes. Does not allow women who are on their menstrual cycle to enter the church. Ah. What, are we to, what are we to say about it? Praise the Lord. Somebody is saying there's a church that when the women are on their periods, you know, their menstrual periods, they don't allow them to come into the church because they feel they are now unclean. Praise the Lord. The question is if you don't allow them to come into the church because they are unclean, how will they now be clean? The woman with the issue of blood entered into the church because Jesus was a symbol of the church. She came to Jesus and she was cleansed. Are you there? So that's it. These are the things that happen when we begin to build doctrines outside of the scripture. Are you there? That's the danger. You, you hear people say, uh, uh, please, sisters, make sure you marry from this church. Males are dangerous outside though. Make sure you marry from what? That's not the gospel. Marry the will of God. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? That's it. The will of God can be from the church and it may not be from that denomination. Are you with me? Go ahead, please. As believers, yes. is it wrong to go out with friends to a to swim or something? Oh, that, that. With <laughs> yours and friends. <laughs> As Christian, is it wrong to go to an hotel to swim because you want to celebrate? 
Can you see? You already know the answer to this one. So God has done something to you now. The next place is hotel. And you want to go and swim. That's how some people kill themselves. Ignorance kill them. They don't know how to swim. So they say, yes, 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 but they used to stay in one tire. So they stay there. <laughs> they are scared though. But they feel that's how to enjoy life. <laughs> so they'll be laughing. So they will be like, <laughs> Can I tell you the truth? Can I tell you the truth? Do you know what death is? Death is ignorance. The power of death is ignorance. It is our ignorance that is killing us. It's not even when you say death, it's ignorance we are talking about. Are you with me? So he, now he has forgotten that he's in the water now. It does because he's a hey, before you get there, you are already pressing a stomach about a gallon of water. <laughs> Can't you stay in your house and celebrate? Wisdom is profitable for what? You don't have to go to a hotel. So that you will not be tempted. Are you there? That's when one guy will walk to you now with one dark shade. Girl, you are looking nice. Can I get your number? And you will be deceived. The environment you are in can define the kind of people you attract. Are you there? That's the truth. Be careful of where you go to. It's very important. Yes, please. So it is not necessary to go there. Are you there? It's not what? Necessary. And going to an hotel is not a sin. Are you with me? I've gone for many social before and I have to lodge in an hotel. So when I'm done with, from the program, I retire to the hotel. Are you there? It's not a sin. But there are times we, there, there, there are some visitations that are not necessary. You are a child of God, and they are playing all this pa boo song. Boo, 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 boo. You are there. Oh, no, I'm a child of God. Do you know that there's something about your body that can respond to song even without your own permission? That's the spirit of songs. You don't know where you are saying? <laughs> Let me give you an example. Some years ago, about five, six years ago, or maybe seven years ago, I went to a church very close to this place, a very big church. And then it was, they were celebrating something, and then they brought a DJ to the church, and the DJ played secular song in the church. The pastor was seated with his wife on the, on the altar, on the pulpit there. And then, you know, there were some people who were dancing, and the pastor was seated, the pastor was saying, <laughs> I was looking at them. The wife now touched and said, She said something to the man. Suddenly, I saw the head of the man now straight. <laughs> Maybe the woman said, Daddy, only then, Josie. <laughs> so let's be careful, yes? In 1 John chapter 5, verse 8, yes. the Bible says, And there are spirit that bear witness. Yes. The spirit and the, the water and yes. the yes. And these three agree in one. Yes. How do these agree in one? Praise the Lord. The spirit, the water, and the what? The spirit, the water, and the what? So, now, those three things are actually pointing to Trinity. Are you there? The Father, Son, and the Spirit. Are you there? So, they are one because Trinity is what? One. Are you getting what I'm saying? I want to try to be fast because we have a lot of questions. Yes. Is it compulsory to play song when praying? Or is it bad? Praise the Lord. When you want to pray, it's not compulsory you play sounds. When you want to preach, it's not even compulsory you play sounds. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's the truth. But if you feel that sounds will help you to pray, play it. If it is a distraction to you, don't play it. Whatever will help your spiritual life, do what? do it. I can preach without sounds and I can preach with sounds. It's not a criteria for anything. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that's it. Yes? In a situation where a person is faced with a battle yes. of his or her friends, yes. you know the battle 
Yes. The battle is parents' battle, but it's affecting you now. So, what's now the question? Can the ignorance of what happened in the past be a barrier to my future? Praise the Lord. This person is now saying, okay, the, the, the battle is parents' battle, and now it's now affecting me. Are you there? Can the ignorance now be what? Can the ignorance now be of what happened in the past be a barrier to my future? Look at this. Look at this. Even what you call battle, is still from your what? Ignorance. Everything is still coming from ignorance. Are you there? There's a knowledge of God you have now that makes battle to become imaginary to you. Are you there? It, got to a, it will get to a point that battles are no longer real to you. It's not because they don't exist, but because now you know God better. Are you getting what I'm saying? So what are we, what are we advise this person now is this. You need to increase your what? Your knowledge of God. Grow in what? In knowledge. Grow in what? Grow in knowledge. When you grow in knowledge, you grow away from that environment where, you know, things can bring you down. Are you with me? That's it. That's just the simple answer. Yes? I was studying a verse. Yes. And I find it difficult in unlocking what the verse is saying. Yes. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 15. Five, six, and seven. Yes. I asked the verse when a man was battling with an enemy, but I don't understand the verse. Sir, can you shed more light? Now, this, I will not be able to answer this because of time. Explaining three verses, right? Because of time, we may not be able to explain that. We have a lot of questions already. Is there a height that you can love God to that can tally with the love, that can tally with the love of God, and then if the love for God enough to kill the flesh, to overcome sin? Yes. How do you overcome sin? Your love for God is the empowerment you need to overcome sin. Are you there? Please note that. Your love for God is the empowerment you need to overcome sin. It's as simple as that. Next question, please. When you discover that your roommate yes. is a witch, <laughs> continue. Like you did not know before. But now you know. But you suddenly saw a true form. Hey. My first question uh, aha. does they know that I know who she is. <laughs> and the next question is that, what do I do next? I can't attack her physically. He's praying a lot. <laughs> this, this, this beloved sister suddenly discovered that her roommate is a witch. Amen. Amen. It was a discovery, a kind of discovery. Sudden one. What should she do? Praise the Lord. The first thing she needs to do is to check her altar. Because now you are dealing with somebody that has altar. Go and work on your altar first. So when you now see that there is fire on your altar, you can now begin to, you can now go on a rescue mission. Are you there? God can use you to save that your friend. But the first thing is check your altar. There has to be what there? Fire on your altar. Are you there? Otherwise, <laughs> She will roast you on her own altar. <laughs> so that's it. Yes? How are you sure that you are still in the right path? That you are still a disciple of Jesus? Now, one of the things that makes, that gives us conviction, that helps us to know that we are disciples of Jesus, is the Spirit of God. The Bible says, the Spirit of God in us beareth a witness with our spirit that we are what? Sons of God. So if you are still following Jesus, the Spirit of God will give you that assurance. The Spirit of God will bring you to that place where you now know, you, you, you are convinced that your life is what? For the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's it. So it's the Spirit of God that helps our conviction. It's the Spirit of God that builds our convictions in God. Is that clear? All right. Yes? Sir, there have been a sentence that I have Hearing okay. That is contradicting. Yes. One is if you are not productive to give, you cannot enter heaven. And another one is yes. a man that wasted his life, his youth, 
and at his old age he met Jesus. Yes. There is no time to be productive, but he will, but he will enter heaven. How do we balance this? Now look at this. If you are not fruitful, are you there? Are you there? If you are not fruitful, you don't have the assurance of going to heaven. Are you there? Look at what this question is saying now. Somebody gave his life to Christ at old age. Now, he worked for the Lord, but he could not do much because of his age. That does not mean he will not make it to heaven. The only thing is that in heaven, he may not get as much reward as those that labor for the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? We, a lot of people will get to heaven. But the reward we will receive is not what? It's not the same. Are you with me? That's it. Yes? If there are eleven one can go to, that one will not be affected by what he sings. It will not invade the person's spirit and be singing in the person's spirit. <laughs> this person is sincere. Praise the Lord. This person is saying, is there a level we can grow to where we will not be affected by what these songs? Praise the Lord. Now, do you notice something? Have you discovered that some of these disco places where they play songs loudly, now they seem to, some people seem to play old hip-hop songs. Have you observed that? Old hip-hop songs. Huh? That thing is a strategy. People like me, I sang those songs. You know, anything me I want to do, I try to do it well. I don't only sing hip hop songs, I compose hip hop songs. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I rapped to my own song. <laughs> I became a rapper. Amen. <laughs> so, when they play old songs, it's, a, it's an attack on Christians. It brings you to. It just suddenly, you just flash back to that period where you are like, okay, that, okay, that, okay, that. <laughs> it's an attack. Are you there? So, but it comes to your heart immediately. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart with what? Urgent. When you are guarding your heart, those things will not enter. Sometimes you hear a song, you, you quickly move far away, but the song is still playing. <laughs> it's a spiritual thing, it's in your heart. It's a sign that you are still in the process of growth. Are you there? There's a level you grow to where those things will not even enter into your heart. It's a function of growth. Yes. Can one choose to be ignorant? If yes, how? Ignorance is a choice. Ignorance is a what? You, if you find an ignorant person, the person chose to. For example, okay, today's meeting will be doing question and answer, question and answer. Ah, me, I will not come. Home. I will come next week. I'll this question and answer thing. That's ignorance. The things he or she is supposed to learn now, he has missed it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Anytime you have opportunity to learn, and you misuse that opportunity, you have chosen ignorance. Are you there? Not making a decision is already a decision. I choose not to learn means I chose ignorance. That's what it means. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's the truth. Yes. How do one balance one's physical life and spiritual life that one will not be affected by the other? It's possible. The Bible says, let the word of the Lord dwell in you, what? Richly. You see, your knowledge of God is what we translate into your knowledge in life. If you know God and you, are, and you have built a relationship with the Spirit of God, that same Spirit will now teach you how to what? Manage your time. Are you there? That's why some students, they have issues with balancing academics with spirituality. So they speak it up. Quack, 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 quack. And they check their results. <laughs> ah, they are hard to spoil. I said, well, oh Lord, I trust you. I trust you. I will, I will serve God. I will serve God. They don't read, though. They don't read. I will serve God. No, I will follow God. I will follow God. They read a week to exam. And then even the last week to exam, they are still doing videos. They will get to the exam more tired. Because they are just coming from the gym. Oh, Lord, I will serve you. Sir, you are ignorant. <laughs> Some of us, because we are not reading, we are not even giving the Holy Spirit anything to remind us of. 
When you put something in your brain and you forget, the Holy Ghost will remind you. But if there's nothing there, you have rendered the Spirit of God powerless. I've done examples before that when this, when I saw the question, as I was looking at the question, I was seeing the page where the answers are in the textbook. That's how I read the book too. Page 19. This one is in. I will see the question. I will say this one is in page 19. This one is in page 16. This one is in page 49. You want to expect that kind of person to fail? No. When you do your part, God will not fail in his part. Tell your neighbor. When you do your part, God will not fail in his part. Thank you. Please. Yes, continue. Um, listening to different messages by different ministers of God. Dangerous to you. Yes, it can be dangerous to you. Listening to different messages from different ministers of God, it can be dangerous to you. Pastor Okoka. Hey, Pastor Okoka is a pastor. You listen. That one, tell, that one now tells you, well, the devil and God, they used to do meeting on Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> you put that one in your jota. You saw Pastor Megladaskis. That one said, the only time God hears prayer is 1 a.m. in the midnight. So, all your life now is 1 a.m. Find the one that God has asked you to follow. And follow the person with all faithfulness. The instruction you need to grow is hidden in that person that God asks you to follow. As you follow faithfully, you'll find yourself in it. You'll begin to see Christ in you. you begin to grow in it. That's all. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes? So, a question talked about giving all to God. Yes. And doing it. Yes. Working for God. So I watched a drama ministration recently about a church member. Yes. Always available in every activity in church. Yes. She is identified in church but not identified. You know what? Read the questions and just give me the summary. Just give me the yes because of that. In in heaven, she is she is seen as a mad woman. Yes. Sir, how can we not know that all our works for God here? Okay, now listen, listen. This one is like we are reading a story now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, based on this story, <laughs> story, story. <laughs> now, I think what this person is trying to say is the woman is laboring, but it happens to be that maybe at the end she was not, she, she could not get a reward, right? Now, look at this. The Bible told us that God will judge our works with fire. Our works will be tested with what? With fire. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, the motive for what we are doing is what justifies that action. Are you there? If I'm doing what I'm doing because I want the people to see me, men will praise me, but God will not reward me. Anything you do to impress men will not impress God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Anything you do to impress men will not what? I want them to know. God will not know. You won't recognize that. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's it. So the issue now is in the motive. That's it. Yes, please. In churches, this Yes. Preachers believe that when you shout, that is when God hears. Yes. But the verse says, God sees. Yes, yes. Now look at this. In churches, according to this question, some people believe that when you shout to pray, that is when God will hear, especially when you are casting out devils. May the Lord help us. Have you seen some deliverance ministers? If you are out of the awe, you will not be praying for them in the awe. Lord, save this person. Because they are they are shout. <laughs> it's like they are the one that the demon is living. I say, God, Aulua, <laughs> help this minister. Help. <laughs> the one possessed is not shouting as much as they are doing. And their shout has overpowered everybody. In <laughs> now look at this. It's not the shouting. You don't need to shout. Are you there? But when you pray, sometimes it's good to shout. Now, the benefit of shouting is not that it will help God to hear. 
God is not deaf. Moreover, I would like you to know that what God hears is not even what you are saying. It's what you are thinking as you are praying that God is hearing. Lord, just give me a car. I will show them in this house. Your heart is saying, what God say? What God say? Ah, one more, one more. But I say, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy in your heart. One more, one more, one more. What God is hearing is one more. One more, one more. You won't get a response. I get what I'm saying. Shouting does not help God to hear because God is not deaf. But shouting can help you, can help you to stay active. Imagine you are praying in the night to 12. You say, Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> you will sleep off. So if there's any advantages in shouting, it is, to, it is what? For you, not God. It helps your body to know you are doing something so you can stay longer in the prayer. Are you there? Some people, they are so much. See, when you are praying and you are dosing, please go and sleep. It's an advice. You are praying and you are like, Lord. The only thing you are saying is, Lord. Lord. Ah, Lord. Even Lord is tired. How many times will you call Lord? Go and sleep. This is because you will soon say something that will be against you. Because you don't know what you are saying. Maybe you are in a vision. They say, oh yeah, tell the person to die. Lord, kill the person. You say, kill me, kill me. Kill me. Then you begin to speak English that is not aligning. I want me to die. Me to die. Kill me, kill me. They said, what are you waiting for? Die. You say, what am I waiting for? I want to die. Lord, kill me, kill me. Kill me, kill me, kill me. They say, you useless devil, live my life. Say, I'm a useless person. <laughs> they say, I'm a useless person. I want to live this life. <laughs> if you are praying and you are dosing, go and sleep. <laughs> Somebody is finding his art too. That's an advice. So that you will not say, you will not put curse on yourself with your mouth. Because you don't, this is what I'm saying, has it not happened before? You say something, I say, hey, Lord, please. <laughs> so why, why, why are you bringing, why are you tempting yourself? Yes, please. So a devotion book. Was talking about when Jesus was eating with tax collector yes. and people was mumbling. Yes. Now, does it mean we believers should associate ourselves with sinners only? Because Jesus also said he loves sinners. As a believer, you you cannot have intimate with sinners. Are you there? But you can show them love. You can be friendly with them, but don't share intimacy with them. Don't share intimacy with sinners as believers. But you can what? You can be friendly. I'm not saying make them your friend. You can be friendly with them. Show them love so that you can win them for the love. Are you there? That's it. Yes? In the book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 26, yes? I really don't understand what that particular verse. What does the word uncircumcision mean? Uncircumcised. What does it mean, right? Praise the Lord. Because of time, this person who have asked this question, I will, I will recommend that the person listens to a message on the YouTube channel on what? Circumcision. There was a teaching we did in the fellowship on circumcision. So that will give you full details on that question. Yes? Next question. Can spirit be forgiven? Praise the Lord. That's one of the... Now listen to me. This is a very critical question. Can spirit be forgiven? Lucifer sinned once and God cast him down. Forgiveness is not a reality for spirits. Do you know why? Huh? The death of Jesus was for humans. So it was those that Jesus died for that can benefit from forgiveness. What was used for the sacrifice is a pointer to those people that the sacrifice is meant for. 
Jesus used his blood. Humans have blood. Spirits don't have blood. So, the benefit of that sacrifice will be on who? Humans. Spirits cannot enjoy forgiveness, but humans can. Because Jesus died for them. Are you with me? Yes? What is the difference between That's why when Lucifer rebelled and he was brought down, did you see any other angel in heaven rebelling? Eh? They have lent their lessons. Yes? <laughs> they have lent their Lucifer, I know maybe he tried to beg and they said, Go down, go down. <laughs> Other angels, they, those that were still trying to form a political party, why WWW, they quickly changed. Yes? What is the difference between being afraid and the fear of God? Praise the Lord. Being afraid and the fear of God. The fear of God is positive. See, fear can be divided into two. There's a positive fear and there's a negative fear. The positive fear is the one you have for God. Your fear for the Lord helps you to reference Him. Your fear for the Lord helps you to honor Him. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's positive. Are you there? But the negative one is the fear that makes you to that that makes you become um, incapacitated. Are you there? That makes you make mistakes. That one is what negative. Are you with me? Good. Yes. Sir, I want clarity on the use of fearing. Some people do say if say it is not accepted in the church according to your church rules and regulations. Yes. Concerning the use of earrings, earrings is not a sin. Are you there? If you use it, fine. If you are not using it, fine. So that you are using it does not mean you are more holier than the one that is not using, and the one that is using is not more holier than you. Are you there? It depends on what you want. Are you there? But the main message is. In all, let us be modest. Let us be what? Don't come and do... You know there are some hearings. It will come like this. <laughs> and they are moving. They do like this. <laughs> Please. Let's be modest. Yes? When you gave victory, this person When you gave victory... If it's not a question, let's move to another one. When you gave victory over a problem, the yes. first thing to do is to watch. Question, question number one: Is it is this correct? What does it mean to watch? This person has to the watch is to discern. Are you there? To watch is to maintain your position in God. That's what it means to watch. To watch is to be at alert, to stay active, not to lose guard. Are you there? That's what it means to watch. Yes. Can I be a child of God and still be living under the influence of demons? That is, is, is it possible for me to still mistake the voice of a demon that is of God? Yes, you can be a child of God, and if you are not careful, you can mistake the voice of a demon for the voice of God. Are you there? Look at that minister I shared with you. When you get there, put your head on the head of the people. And you have to stay in prayer to, to, to be sure. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's it. It's possible. Before a demon can use. This person is just demon, demon, demon. <laughs> or speak to you. Does it have to possess you? No. A demon does not need to possess you before it speaks to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Legion spoke to Jesus, but it's legion in Jesus. They can speak from outside and you will hear. Praise the Lord. Now, please, how many questions do we have? Our time is running. The left is still much. Give me, give me, give me everything. The one that is left, just go and please, you can go. Then, um, those ones that have not answered, just keep them for me. Praise the Lord. So what we are going to do is this. Um, we are going to type, hello, are you with me? We are going to type out those questions. Are you with me? We are going to type out those questions on the mentorship group. I want to believe all of us are there. So I'm going to answer them on the mentorship group. So, I, I think I should, by the grace of God, God helping me, I should answer a part of it today. Then maybe tomorrow I will answer another part, on and on like that. Are we together? Because of time. Amen. Now, um, do we have anybody that wants to say something, generally? Uh, you want to ask, there's a question coming to your mind. 
People are not asking questions concerning relationship. We are acting like angels. <laughs> okay. Praise the Lord. These are the ones that is me. Hold it. I will tell you what to do about it. Praise the Lord. We need to ask the needed question. Okay, you have a question. Okay. Okay, let's attend to the designer one there. Okay. Please be fast. Yeah, does he? Okay, when you are speaking in tongues. Some people feel you are disturbing them when you are speaking in tongues. So what should you do? I'm trying to be fast with your question. Now, when you are speaking in tongues and people feel you are disturbing them, it will mean that there is something about your sound that is actually disturbing them. Take for instance, I did a teaching on that, on that discussion with brethren. You see, when you are at home and you want to pray, are you there? Don't go. You are not helping the people. You are only edifying your spirit. Nobody will pick anything from that. So you are disturbing them. When you want to pray in your house, pray with your understanding. So that your dad, if it is Lord, have mercy. Be saying what they can hear. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy, oh, have mercy. Have mercy, oh, have mercy. At least, if your mommy pick that one, something can strike her spirit and she'll be asking for mercy. So are you there? But don't do rogo go rogo go rogo rogo go rogo rogo go rogo 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 go rogo rogo. They will come to you and say, "Kilo ro, boy, mama, what do rogo?" Are you there? That's it. But when you are alone, you can do the rogo go rogo. That's it. Yes. Yes. The spirit is just moving you to. <laughs> it's not your fault. I know, I know, I know. You are a man of God. <laughs> it's the spirit. It's the spirit that is. Praise the Lord. When you know that, and then you want to pray the spirit way, find a nearby forest. <laughs> are you there? <laughs> or you can choose to. Um, that the place I'm coming. Do prayer work in the night. You can do all your rogo go rogo. Nobody will talk. They will greet you. Don't answer. Rogo go rogo go. Are you there? That is how to survive. You see, if you don't balance your spirituality with wisdom, you become a fool. There are some things I will not take. Up. You are cooking. Maybe we are living in the same house. You are cooking for me in the kitchen. You are doing rogo go rogo. And you are coming with my food. Just say. <laughs> I'm going to deal with you. That was a show. <laughs> because you lack wisdom. You are coming with a food that you did not cover. <laughs> so can... I want you guys to me the first question I will ask you is, what did I do to you, sister? <laughs> that you are chosen to poison me like this. He says, sir, don't do anything. I'm just praying in the spirit. You are praying in the spirit. You lack. It happened to a, a sister. She stayed in her city room. The mother knew she was doing something spiritual, but she is inconveniencing people there. Some of us, we are so deep. May the Lord help us. When they are cooking, you are praying. When they finish cooking, you are praying ahead. That's this crap. <laughs> Go and join them in the kitchen. If it is plate, go and wash. Go and grind pepper. Wash rice and be responsible. At least once. Are you getting what I'm saying? And now you, you know because your parents are Christians, they cannot they cannot ask you not to do something spiritual. You are not using that to rob them. <laughs> By then they, they begin to serve. That's why I say thank you, Father. Thank you. You are a witch <laughs> or a wizard, either of the two. I've done it before. My own was not something spiritual. I would just lie on the. Some of you now, this is what you are doing. I will just lie on the chair in the sitting room. They are washing plates. I won't wash. 
When they come in to pick something, that's when I will turn. <sighs> when they are done, I'll say, <sighs> I'll now wait. Wizardry. That's, that's sorcery. <laughs> God has to cast that devil out of me. Are you there? Let me tell you this. It may look hard. If you know you want to pray, do everything you need to do before you start the prayer. If you are praying and your mommy comes in with things in her hands to cook, end your prayer. The moment she starts walking and you are praying, God has stopped God has stopped listening to that prayer because you lack wisdom. Your mommy cannot be walking in the kitchen and you are praying in the room and you are praying in the room and God will hear. He has closed his ears. The prayers of the fools, God will not answer. God told me this personally. I'm not trying to teach you. God told me personally. Children don't know. They are trying to be spiritual. Your mommy is sweating. She's the one washing the plate you used to eat. But you are there saying, Keleba. She went to grind the pepper, do everything. You are there saying, hey, Lakaba, Lord, today, I want to know you. You won't know him. <laughs> because you lack wisdom. So if you really want to pray, let your mommy be aware. Everything you need to do, let him be there. Water in the toilet, in the kitchen, everything should be ready. She should just come there and do it. Are you there? Without stressing herself. But apart from that, God has stopped listening to that your prayer since. You don't even know what prayer is. Prayer is more of service than what you say. If I stop by rogo go rogo go do go ro 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 your mommy brought rodo now your own tongue has said to rodo ro 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 do ro do ro go do go ro. If I stop that thing and I go and join my mom in the kitchen to assist her. To God I'm still praying. Only that the prayer I'm not doing now is in service. That's what you don't know. And most of the prayers God wants us to pray is through service. You must understand this. Prayer. Your daddy is coming with a heavy load. You are there saying, Shaka Banata. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Shaka Banata. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm sorry. <laughs> Press the Lord. Any question? All right. Hallelujah. Yes. On their wedding night, yes. The sister discovered that the brother is impotent. They are married on their wedding night. The sister now discovered the brother is impotent. What should the sister what do? She should she should praise the Lord. <laughs> she should what? Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. They are now married now. What should she do? Let her find. Let them think, sit together. Think of how to find solution to it. That's all. It is no longer his problem. It has become our problem. <laughs> Are you there? That's it. I remember the story of, you know, a, a, you know, a particular wife went to her husband and said, please speak to me. Anything that has happened to you has happened to us. And the husband is like this. Don't speak to me, dear. <laughs> the husband said, are you sure? <laughs> okay, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to The wife said, You let it. I do for you. you. Tani, to be or any colorful lawyer. Praise the Lord. So that's it. Let's take this last question. Yes. Mutual miracles. Miracles. Is it miracle? Much was in pastors too. Okay. 
like physical miracles. It does, it exists. It does. It does. We have seen it before. We have seen it. So it does. There's time I came to your school, but you were not there. Right? There was a time I came to your school for a ministration. Elizabeth, you remember that time? Before the last one, you were not there. I know they should tell you. Your friends should tell you. That day I prayed for those that were sick and they came out. They should tell you what happened that day. You don't have friends in the fellowship. They should tell you. That one is physical. So it does, it exists. And it's God that is doing it. Those of you that are listening to crumbs two days ago, I told you how that about two days ago I was ministering and when I finished somebody said I used to take drugs for being mad. I said it now. Yeah? Did I say something like that? Those of you that are listening to it two days ago. And the person said the madness. He even came to me today. I said you are healed of the thing. Stop taking the drugs. I said thank you sir. I'm very happy. So you are healed. Are you there? So it happens. It's God that is doing it. That's why we call miracle, not magical. Eh? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can we thank the Lord for his word that we've heard today? And say, Father, we bless you. We bless you. We still have 30 minutes more. Let's bless him. Let's bless him. Shabra handa sika barada banantos. Riga baba lata barando sika broho baba ba. Jende brehida baba bantos. Kabalante breha baba Rie baba bananto koboro ko maraga mananto sikaba. Rebida bana verrego do kodo boro kodo bene ko baria kabananta. Zizeze ze verrege de bonoto kabala twa kapanta. Ie da 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 da. In Jesus name we have prayed. In Jesus name we have prayed. You know our time is really flying. I checked the time to see that we are, you know. The time is almost up. Okay, now, why they were discussing the... Okay. Praise the Lord. Both of them are offerings. Are you there? When you are giving offering, one, you can, you offer... I said it now, in the beginning of the teaching. I said you can give what you have. When you go to church and you drop your money, you buy bread, you give it to your man of God. Are you there? <laughs> bread is something. Now, why are you laughing again? <laughs> Somebody bought bread for me last week. What? I will not just mention. It's even here. And the bread was a spiritual bread. <laughs> when I say spiritual bread, good bread, not bread of affliction. No. <laughs> Are you there? <laughs> you know bread of affliction now? That one that is very hard. You... <laughs> Praise the Lord. So when you buy things, when you give things, you are giving, that's a form of offering. There's another offering that involves you. Give yourself. For, this, for example, what I'm doing now is I'm giving myself for the Lord. I've been stand, standing for hours. And it's not because I want to get any money from it. The offerings, if we do offering, it's not my money. It's not like every Sunday, at least, pastor knows that we do. It's not my money. <laughs> Are you there? The things, maybe the Lord lays in your heart and you give to me, that's my money. But the one you throw in the offering box is not. Once it inside to that basket, it's not my money. Amen. It's God's money. So, you give your things and you give what? Yourself. Are you with me? That's it. You see, tithe is a form of offering. There are forms of offerings. You, under that, you have tithe, you have first fruits, first fruit of your increase, contribution. Those things are offerings. Anything that can be offered is an offering. Not that, please. Anything that can what? Yes. Anything that can be Offered is an offering. Yes, there's a there's a question here, Polisha. Sure. Gospel songs, yes. Yes. Of course, the, the lyrics counts. When we are when we are judging gospel songs, we must first look at what the lyrics, because to sing a song, you have to repeat after somebody. Are you there? Don't confess negative things to yourself. No, no. It's not necessary. You don't have to die before your time. It's not compulsory. Still have a lot to do. So live long. Tell your neighbor, say live long, live long. Don't die now, live long. Are we all satisfied? Is there any other thing coming up? All right, can we?
Wow. In the spirit of gratitude, can we write? There's still one more. Okay. Quickly. Yes. 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 You see? Now, he's not asking why is it that some churches, after taking offering, then they take what? Tight. All those things they are doing is still offering. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's offerings. It's just that they now divided it into groups. Have you not been to some churches that they are, they are giving is just one? It's once. Once they announce and you come out to give, that's all. There's no offering of life. <laughs> offering of eternity with the Lord. Offering of going and coming safely. There's nothing like that. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that's it. depends on how the church wants to do their own. Are you there? Can we rest to our feet? Okay, somebody wants to. Oh, okay. Please go to the question. Pastor Fetemi. <laughs> during the week. Yes? Yes. I covered this with the blood of Jesus. Yes? I was just feeling like, why did I cover with the blood of Jesus? Because the life. Hello, if you have the life of God, you already have the blood of Jesus running in your vein. You don't need to cover yourself with the blood of Jesus again. Are you there? There is an abuse in the usage of the blood of Jesus. You want to eat now? Amal and then soup. I cover this thing now with the blood of Jesus. For what? The blood of Jesus that was shed, you need to know why the blood was shed. Are you there? That blood was shed for the remissions of what? Of sin. Are you there? When you don't know what something is meant for, abuse is inevitable. But because God is meant for those will be looking at you. I cover this fish with the blood of Jesus. Because, hey, yeah? <laughs> so the blood that my son will shed now, you are putting it on fish. Ah! <laughs> But the Lord will help us. Can we rest our feet and say thank you, Father? Thank you, Father. Just bless him, bless him, bless him wherever you are. Shabranda balada barash. We bless you, Jesus. Oh, we have been blessed by your presence. We cannot deny.